kid. And it, and it, it sounds like the way you describe his personality, I mean, throughout the entire book, the way his personality is, is that there was no way he wasn't going to be successful in music. I, I think, I mean, that's the thing. I think you have to, tremendous amount of admiration and respect for him because I, I think um, Matthew, he, just, he just didn't appear that he was going to be stopped. And, and you know, the, the first, the first couple of records, the first three, four, five records, you know, he had all sorts, he was dropped from a record company, second record, record company refused to put out, third and fourth record, the, the, the record, the breakthrough record, American Fool, the real breakthrough record, um, the record company didn't want to release it. They didn't think Jack, they, they couldn't see Jack and Diane as a single. Um, they wanted him to put horns on it, et cetera, et cetera. And he, he stuck to his guns and did it his way. Like, there's, a, there's a great story in the book where they send an emissary from the record company down to the studio and he's attempting to explain why horns should be on the record. Uh, and John literally let him out the studio door and closed the door behind him onto the street. And um, so he was always going to do it, but I, I think that that sort of determination to, to do it his way and to to be who he was going to be, I think is the, is one of the great things that's admirable about him. Yeah, I mean, as you painted in the book, he, he didn't give up. I think that... The, one of my favorite quotes is from his, I guess, his grandfather Speck, Grandpa Speck. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll say it. There, uh, you're gonna hit a cocksucker, kill him. And so I think that seemed. You've mentioned that a number of times in the book, and I'm sure that that was the way he looked at it. Was uh, you know, you you got to commit yourself to to something, and he, uh, and. and you know, this is what he did. This is this is all he knew. He's like, all right, I'm all in. I'm either all in or I'm not in at all. And that's you know, like, okay, this is going to be my life. I got to keep pushing. Yeah, I, I think we. I mean, we mentioned this background. I think that that. I mean, that's almost like one of his. Um, you might as well as as inscribe that quote on tablets of stone because he 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 held on to what his grandfather said. I mean, it, but it's, it's, I think all the men folk in the family, the, the the older men that he was sort of around and looked up to were. Um, were really com were competitive, but also pitted the kids against each other and themselves against each other. And, you know, he, his brother said, his half brother said to me, you know, second didn't count in the family. No one, you weren't patted on the back for coming second. You, you were expected to win or to try to win. Um, and, this, you know, his, his dad would hold these sort of, he would make the, the, the three brothers box against each other and sprint against each other and do all these kind of things. Um, and he definitely carried that all the way through. It, 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 the, the band members that you talk to, right from the earliest, you know, um, Kenny Aronoff, who was the, the who was the drummer for a long time of his band, would, would just tell me that, you know, you were made to do it over and over and over and over again, and and it, it had to be perfect. And and the band, the band were just drilled to a ridiculous degree with rehearsals and and, and all that sort. Of, so he he it. it he isn't like, you know, he's not one of those characters who just sort of, you know, wings it or it just, he, he pushed everybody else around him as well. 